Good morning. Welcome to our parish of St. Columba. On this day, in union with the Church throughout the world, we celebrate the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Bishop Gaynor is lifting the COVID-19 masking mandate and all other remaining COVID restrictions effective Monday, June 28th. However, those who wish to continue wearing a mask are welcome to do so. We will also continue to encourage those who are unwell or under care for COVID-19 to refrain from attending Mass in person. The dispensation from the obligation for attending Mass still remains in place. We welcome Father Richard Mowry on his first weekend celebrating Sunday Mass at his new parish. Father David L. Daniker, our Diocesan Vicar General and Moderator of the Curia, will publicly and officially install Father Maui as pastor of St. Columba Parish this Tuesday evening, June 29th, which is the Solemnity of St. Peter and Paul Apostles at 7 o'clock p.m. This is a special event for our parish, and we hope that you can be here. Before Mass, we will pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And now we turn together to number 563. Praise the Lord, be heavens, number 563. And for those who are viewing from home, on your knees, are also present to be Christian in this video. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. I've been told many times I have big shoes to fill, but I don't know how I'm going to fill them since they're only seven and a half inch big. Mine are a little bit bigger. Might have to chop off some toes, but... I have big shoes to fill, but I'll fill my own shoes, and I ask you to be patient with me, because when I'm installed on Tuesday, I will become your pastor, and I look forward to meeting and getting to know 
all of you as much as possible. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Death 
entered the world, and they who belong to its company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in a boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, aware at once that the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, you see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, who touched me? He looked around to see who had done it, the woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembled. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion. People were weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother, and those who were with him, and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Tatia Kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise, the girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that, they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this, and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Oftentimes, when I was a younger child, my mom or my father, they would often ask me, how did I do on a test? Seeing that I studied all night, I would come home and say, I guess I did okay, maybe not that well. 
I may get the test grades back. If I fail, I fail. But if I did good, they would holler at me. Or I should say scold. Because they were telling me I wasn't having faith in my abilities. They knew I had a hard time reading, but they were telling me, you could do better. You can have faith in your abilities and trust in yourself. And that same faith and trust is taking place today, especially in the Gospel. We see that our Lord has gone back to the other side. He is on the side of Capernaum. And he's away from the Gentiles. And we see that there is a synagogue official who places his trust in Jesus, places his faith in Jesus, because Jesus asked him to. His daughter is sick and dies. And we see later on in the story that the daughter is healed. He didn't let his faith just fall away. He didn't let others tell him how to pray or where to put his faith into. But we see that something a little bit more miraculous with the woman today, with hemorrhages. Because if you know, there are 613 laws that the Jewish people must follow. And one of them is if you were unclean in any way, like a leopard, you weren't allowed to be with the other people. You had to stand apart. And then this woman should have been stoned for her insurrection, put her faith in Jesus, because she knew that she could be healed by touching him. It's a, these things are the faith that our Lord is looking for when he was here walking on this earth. A faith of just putting total trust in Jesus and relying on what he is going to do. Or a faith that's willing to die just so to have some peace. We too can have that same faith, even with the story that my mother, that I told you about my mother and father, I had to learn that I, too, could place my faith in things, but more importantly, I had to place my faith in God, in Jesus. Because when I did that, all things became possible. For one who has a problem reading and dyslexia, I, too, was even able to become a priest later on in life. So all things are possible when we allow Christ to be part of our lives and part of what we do and all that we do. And when we place the very body, blood, soul, and divinity in our lives, we too can have that strength. We too can have the strength of God at work within us. As we have heard in St. Paul to the Corinthians, we will have that in abundance grace given to us by placing Christ who died on the cross for you so we can have a chance to go and be with him forever in heaven. When we realize that we have a loving Father who wants to give all to us, his daughters and sons, we start realizing that we have a Father who wants us to continually to grow more in love with him. So as we go about this week, let us place our faith in something other than ourselves, and especially not within this world. Let us take our faith out of these walls and show others what's truly important in our life, Christ Jesus, by how we act and treat another. Maybe it's having to forgive someone who has hurt us in some way, shape, or form, and ask our Father to forgive them. Maybe it's something that we have to let go of even within our own families. Whatever it is,
Let us have the faith of these two people, of the woman and of Jairus, and allow our faith to be able to go forward with our Lord to touch and be close to our Lord. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God not made, substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for our spend and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Father. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He has ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds to the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the generous compassion of God, we turn to the Father and voice our petitions. The God will strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on all families gathered together at this time of year for reunions or for a time of rest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will bless our nation as we celebrate Independence Day and keep us always thankful for our freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord who is gracious and merciful will raise up the poor, the sick, the downtrodden, and those most in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to live with greater faith in Christ's power over sickness and death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healthcare professionals, first responders, and those who are serving others, may they be protected from the COVID-19 illness and be instruments of Christ's healing for the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For blessings on our armed forces and for the protection of all those who risk their lives to preserve the security of our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, that they may experience eternal happiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we praise you with all our hearts, for you, for you have rescued us. Preserve us, protect us, change our mourning into dancing. We ask this through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
cleanse and are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, for to the earth that work of human hands, so become for us the bread of life. Let us be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands, so become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all this holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant me pray that the deeds by which you serve of you May be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you. At their passing from this life, give condiments to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him.
and the Savior's command that form by divine teaching, we dare to say, My God, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Pray to see grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
before I give the final blessing, it's got two quick announcements. One, I realized the other day that Monsignor is 55 years as a priest. I'm quite blessed than that. I'm only five, so I'm only five years old. And I did the math. It's 9.0909%. It just keeps on going. So I'm not quite 10% yet of who Monsignor was. So, as we get to know each other, I will form you, and you can help form me too, to grow my priesthood, and for you to grow in holiness. And the second announcement, on July 3rd, you need to keep someone from your parish community in your prayers. I think his name is Jerry or Gerard. He used to be a dentist, so you may not like him too much. But he's getting ordained to the diaconate at 10 o'clock, July 3rd, Saturday, at St. Teresa's Parish um, by Bishop Gaynor. So, again, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. And we thank you for leaving your pews, your kneelers down before you exit the pews so that we know where to clean. And thank you so much to all the people who have stayed out here to help clean the pews over this interval. We are so appreciative for everything you've done. We go forth singing Christ Before Us, verses 1 and 2. That's number 407, Christ Before Us, verses 1 and 2. Right. 